So we're in Salt Lake City. Shop is Memento Mori. We got records for sale, uh, art gallery, pool table to kill time with. But this is my actual first fighter that I've uh, had the opportunity to cut the hair. So it's pretty fun, a little nerve wracking. Start looking good. Yeah. I always do my you know, hair cut in the fight week. I don't want to look like a bum. Right. Final look. Perfect. That nice skin fade. Feeling ready to kick ass? Oh yeah. Good luck this week. Thanks. For this one, knowing that you're, you're at full health, like what's your feeling coming to this? Saturday, I'm gonna really have fun out there. You're gonna see something different in me because I've been feeling good. Y'all for sure see a six pack on me this weekend. If not, if, <laughs> if not, if not, I'm gonna give y'all a chance to talk post fight if I don't have a six pack. Deal. <laughs> Deal. All right. Derek outside, well, he's, he's obviously a hilarious guy, but he's, uh, he's an introvert. Uh, but when he gets in front of the cameras and the people, man, he'll definitely put on a show, but he's a hilarious guy. Hi, Derek. Hey. How are you doing? I'm good, how are you doing? Um, I'm good, you look a little sweaty. Yeah, I'm a little sweaty. How are your balls? They're a little sweaty. <laughs> they're for real, they're sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> At least you kept your pants on. Yeah, I'm keeping them on. can't be doing it. Looking Thank you, good, brother. Thank you, brother. He's looking, looking good, right, here. I don't know. I try. I try a little bit. <laughs> I love it. You nice. see my friend, see you, brother. This is what I do. This is what I do. Oh, what my I do. good <laughs> When I so saw him, I was like, ooh. You heard that? <laughs> I mean, you got a reaction from me. <laughs> I was like, God damn, this boy look good. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's about. <laughs> Bobby Green, uh, veteran of the sport, obviously uh, entertaining style. I mean, what are you expecting? The way you guys match up, it seems like it could be a pretty wild fight in there. I think he's a confused individual. Now, I'm not going to call him but I just saw him in the lobby not too long ago. But when he saw me, he looked like he saw the fourth horseman of death. I don't really demand presence, but everybody gets quiet when I walk into a room. That dude was really quiet. Like, what do you feel about your future in the sport? Is it safe to say, like, no amount of setbacks or anything are going to push you out? No, I'm going to you. I'm going to be done when I want to be done but I'm also gonna have to do what I have to do in order to get to where I wanna get. Five fights in the title, baby, I'm out. Oh, there's some hardcore gaming going on over here. Hardcore. Oh, you got Uno and Dice after, after we show. Nothing but competitive racket sports and card games for cash, right? Trying to pay rent over here. Damn, this, this, mess. Check this one out. Where's your stuff? Eddie, I'm about to go to bed, and I hope you have the best day. I love you. Where's your stuff? I don't want your fight. Bye. I love you. Oh, my girl. So we had Traeger come out. I got all my family here, my coaches. Figured I would get them fed. We had the Traeger boys. They're based out of here, so they came through. And hooked us all up. I should have had him here after weigh-ins. <laughs> we hey, I got some American Wagyu briskets smoked on the trigger. Just pulled them off like two hours ago. Put them on at midnight. And then I got some baked beans and I put some chorizo, pork sausage, and bacon in. Doctored up some baked beans, so a lot of good food coming. This is 16 hours on the trigger. Oh my god. That's American Wagyu. <laughs> I tasted the meat, but I definitely ain't tasting nothing else. It's good. So good. Yeah. I don't know if I got to know if I can wear it. Welcome to the UFC 291 press conference from Salt Lake City, Utah where the UFC is back for their annual summer visit to the beautiful backdrop of Salt Lake City for a big-time pay-per-view event this Saturday. Coming to the stage is Justin, the highlight, Gaethje. Please welcome UFC superstar, Dustin, the diamond, 
All right, who has the first question? John Morgan. Dustin, I know you've had tremendous success in rematches throughout your career, so I'm just wondering what you attribute that to. Why have you been so successful the second time you get in there with us? We fought five years ago. Me and my team, this whole camp, we went about this like it was a new fight. My last fights, the growth, my, my confidence, my mindset, all of that, that's what's driving me forward, not that fight. Like I said, this is a new fight. Justin, I want to ask you as well. I mean, uh, you were in there with them. What was the biggest surprise for you in that first fight? Maybe something you didn't expect or something you learned about Dustin Poirier that night? Yeah, I would say his resilience. You know, I uh, landed some big shots. Never once did I feel like he was going to quit or give in. And, you know, he's a dog, and I love uh, love these fights. So um, I'm a competitor. I love competition, and I'm here to fight. Questions for Alex. When you see Jan's past fight, he's obviously had a lot of success against middleweights coming up. What do you see from Jan's game that maybe other middleweights haven't been able to take advantage of? Quando ele foi nocauteado, foi cruzado de esquerda. E eu nocauteio todo mundo com cruzado de esquerda. Se ele pensar nisso, pô, ele não vai ter um bom desempenho, né? Ele tem que esquecer tudo isso e, pô, focar só no sábado. Obviously, Jamal Hill has vacated the belt, so I'm curious, do you view this as the number one contender fight for a possible fight for a vacant title? Of course, after Saturday, I'm going to be next fighter for the title shot. I believe in that. A question for Bobby Green. Bobby, a lot of people are talking about how unusual Tony is when he fights, but you're pretty unique in there yourself. Do you think people are overlooking how unorthodox you fight? All I want to say is, it's going to be the I can't tell you how it's going to go, but it's going down. That's all I can tell you. He said he saw fear in my eyes. You better look again. He said you should look again. I just want to clarify, you do believe you saw fear in his eyes yesterday? Yep. For Dustin and Justin, uh, a lot of talk about the BMF title. It's finally sitting there, just a couple feet in front of you. Uh, does that bring any more excitement, or would you just think now that you've had an in-person look? It's going to look great on the wall. Um, this does a lot for our legacy. Um, we all we all dream of creating a legacy that will live on forever. So this is part of that. This is a, a huge statement. That's what it is. This is a legacy fight, and we have one of these sitting in my gym. And this one's going right next to it, man. It's cool to even have your name in the hat to be considered to fight for something like this. Not any man can wear this belt, but the undisputed title is the ultimate prize. And from being the undisputed world champion, that's the ultimate goal. All right, folks, that's gonna do it. We are gonna have Nick Maynard up here and stare these athletes down. Don't be a memory. Yeah, there it is, I am.